first meeting of the uh, Planning Commission. My name is David Weiner. I, I act as the chair. Uh, before we get started, I've asked Mr. Costin to leave us, lead us in prayer, and Mr. Horsley to the uh, pledge. Please rise. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. God, we even thank you for this rain, God, which we so badly need. Now, God, we ask that you would use us today as your servants, that your people may be benefited, God, from the decisions made here on today. God, we thank you for your love, your spirit of fellowship, and we pray these blessings in your name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. Next, um, mm. I've been here for a while and I've never had anybody <coughs> introduce the members the way Mr. Redmond does. He does a is great a job at it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Is that a good thing? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. So we've asked Mr. Redmond to introduce the members. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to start on that side of the desk with uh, the lady wearing the mask over there is Kay Wilson. She is a deputy city attorney. Part of her portfolio is um, the uh, uh, planning and land use um, items. And so she's here with us every month. Um, and helps guide us and does a fine job of that. Sitting next to her is Mr. John Costin. He is a retired fire captain um, and he serves at large. Next to John is Robin Klein. Robin is a social worker. She represents the Centerville District um, and, uh, uh, and she is a very important and valued member here as well as Mr. George Alcaraz who does all kinds of different things. George is a contractor, he's a business owner, he's an events promoter, he's a very creative fellow, obviously, and he represents the Beach District. Dee Oliver might be here a little bit later on. She had a prior, prior engagement um, this morning. She's also um, a Swiss Army knife um, uh, career-wise. She's in the funeral business, she's an author, she's a speaker, um, and, uh, and unfortunately this, is, uh, this would be Dee's last meeting, I believe. Um, so it's December. There are some members who are rotating off the committee here, and unfortunately, Dia is one of them because she too is not only a lovely lady, but a very, very valued member here. Uh, Donald Horsley is a farmer. He represents, I, I'm sorry, he serves at large. Um, he, as you can tell by his tie, he is also a Hokie. Um, and, uh, uh, and he's, uh, and he's, he always rolls his eyes when I say he's typically one of the smartest guys in the room, but he is. Um, David Weiner is our chairman. He is from the Kempsville district. Mm -hmm. um, it would be his last term, um, but by some, you know, shenanigans, he finagled an extension of one year. Um, he has been our chairman for the last yeah. two years. One year. One year. Before that, he was vice chairman. He's done a fine job of those things too, and led us very well. Um, fortunately, though, we will. Uh, his replacement is the fellow sitting to his left, which, who is Jack Wall. Jack is our current vice chairman. He represents the Rose Hall district. Um, and he will be our chairman beginning in January of uh, 2022, which we look forward to. I neglected to mention that George Alcaraz is going to be our vice chairman. Um, so a very strong team leading the commission um, into the new year. This gentleman to my right is Mike Inman. Uh, he serves at large. He is a real estate attorney and a, and a superb real estate, real estate attorney at that. He too is serving in his last meeting. I almost want to you know, cry about all that. I went to a, I won't, I won't. I went to, I remember we went to an event an engineer had put on at one of these breweries in time and it was, you know, I wasn't expecting to see anybody. I walked in there, he wasn't. I said, Inman's here, all right. And so I hope we have some more of those things because I've enjoyed sitting next to you and you too are one of the smartest guys in the room. So I am not the smartest guy in the room. Um, my name's Dave Redmond. I'm a, a commercial real estate broker. I represent the uh, Bayside District. This is Whitney Graham. He represents the Lynn Haven District. Um, he is a business owner and a real estate developer and a broker. Did I mention Lynn Haven District? Lynn Haven District. Um, uh, this gentleman to, um, at the far end is uh, David Bradley. He is a retired budget director for the city of Virginia Beach. Uh, he lives in and represents the Princess Anne District. That guy in the mask over there next to him is Bobby Tahan. He is the planning director. Um, he has a number of very fine staff people who Bobby is now going to introduce. Mr. Tom. Thank you, Mr. Redmond. Uh, clerking today, we have Nicole Garrido and Pam Sanlu. As well, we have our planning administration staff that's here, Carolyn Smith, Noah Waddow, Marshall Coleman, Michaela McKinney, and Elizabeth Nowak. 
Also with us, we have Ansonette Folks, who's uh, one of our development liaisons, uh, Carrie Bocolt, our Development Services Center Administrator, Brandon Hackney, one of our planners uh, in the zoning division, and of course, we have Tori Rice with the City Attorney's Office, who also gives us support as well. Thank you, Mr. Tahan, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Next, we need, um, Madam Clerk, will you please explain the rules and go over <laughs> what we need to do today? Thank you, Mr. She Chair. keeps us in line. The Virginia Beach Planning Commission takes pride in being fair and courteous to all parties in attendance. It is important that all involved understand how the Commission normally conducts its meetings. It is equally important that everyone treat each other and the members of the Commission with respect and civility. We request that if you have a cell phone to either silence it or turn it off. Following is an abbreviated explanation of the rules. The complete set of rules is located in the front of the Planning Commission agenda. The order of business for this public hearing, withdrawals and deferrals. The chairman will ask if there are any requests to withdraw or defer an item on the agenda. Consideration of these requests will be made first. Consent agenda. Second order of business is a consideration of the consent agenda, which are those items that the Planning Commission believe are unopposed and which have favorable staff recommendation. Regular agenda. The commission will then proceed with the remaining items on the agenda. When an agenda item has been called, we will recognize the applicant or their representative first. Following the applicant or their representative, registered speakers will be called next. Speakers in support or opposition of an agenda item will have three minutes to speak unless they are solely representing a large group, such as a Civic League or Homeowners Association, in which case they will have 10 minutes. Please note that the actions taken by the Commission today are in the form of a recommendation to the Virginia Beach City Council. The final decision to approve or disapprove an application will be made by the City Council. The Commission thanks you for your attendance and we hope that your experience here today leaves you feeling that you have been heard and treated fairly. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, before we get started, we have uh, some house cleaning up to do here. Um, I, we need to add this item to the agenda and I need a motion to add this item, a resolution to schedule monthly meetings of the Planning Commission from January 22nd to, to December 2022, January 2022, December 2022. Can I have a motion, please, to add this to the <clears throat> agenda? Uh, Mr. Chair, I make a uh, motion to add the resolution to schedule monthly meetings of the Planning Commission to the agenda. Second. All right, we have a motion by Mr. Wall and a second by Mr. Horsley. Okay, vote is open. <clears throat> by recorded vote of 10 in favor, zero against adding a resolution to schedule the monthly planning commission meetings for 2022 has been added to the agenda thank you now i need a motion to approve the dates that have been handed in front of us here from january 2022 to december 2022 uh, mr chair i make a motion to uh, approve the agenda items or the um, the dates um, from january 2022 to december 2022 all right do you have a second i'll second that Motion by Mr. Wall, second by Mr. Horsley. Okay, vote is open. By recorded vote of 10 in favor, zero against, the resolution to add the Planning Commission dates for 2022 has been approved. Thank you. Now what we do every time this year, we need a uh, nomination for officers for 2022. Mr. Chairman, I would like to place in nomination for chairman of the Planning Commission for the upcoming year, Mr. Jack Wall, and for vice chairman, Mr. George Alcrez. <coughs> second. Second. Here we have a motion by Mr. Horsley, a second by Mr. Inman. Redmond. I mean, Redmond. I'm sorry. I knew that. I was looking right at him. I said, Inman. <laughs> we look so much alike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Vote is open. By recorded vote of 10 in favor, zero against, a motion to appoint Jack Wall as chair and George Alcaraz as vice chair for Planning Commission 2022 has been approved. Thank you. Okay, next we're going to withdrawals and deferrals. Does anybody have an item to withdraw or defer? Hmm. There are none. So we are going to go right into the consent agenda. Mr. Wall, this is where you take over. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. We have um, 26 <coughs> items on the consent agenda today, on the regular consent agenda, um, including short-term rentals. Um, <clears throat> the first item is agenda items, actually one and two, uh, Virginia Beach Racquet Club North Associates, both applicant and property owner, um, for rezoning from R20 to R40, 
and the subdivision variants. Um, at uh, 1951, Thomas Bishop Lane in the Lynn Haven District as their representative um, for this item. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the Commission for the Record, Eddie Burdon, Virginia Beach Attorney, representing the Racket Club, uh, the, the Shiflet, Dr. Shiflet and his family uh, on these applications. I appreciate Marshall's work on this uh, application and, on, and being on the consent agenda. The two conditions recommended are acceptable. I did want to follow on um, some of uh, Commissioner Wall's um, inquiries this morning in the informal. Um, just from, I'll try to be, I apologize, I'll try to be brief. Thomas Bishop Lane, as it runs through this property, you can see the, that little dotted line that goes all the way up to the far end. That's a power easement that ran along the original Great Neck Road. Great Neck Road ran right through here, where Thomas Bishop Lane is now, way back in the day. Um, I, I think it was actually, uh, the new one was, um, dedicated, I believe, in the mid '60s. Um, <clears throat> so, the the Shiflets, knowing that they were going to move this um, bubble where the tennis courts are now, that was the indoor, over to a new one, about over 10 years ago, started planning for this property. Three lots were created on the Long Creek Canal uh, with the subdivision variance and with Bay Board approval, and it was everybody's consensus staff uh, at the time not to extend the road and put a cul-de-sac. It's more environmentally friendly to do some um, flag lots. <clears throat> Three flag lots were created. Um, the first one has a house on it. The second one is shown there um, with the little box. The third one is where the, the box would have been. And then there was more land to the west and then all the way down. They planned on having five other lots that would have all been served by the same easement that already exists. Instead, we're just creating three. The, the third lot of the original three has been incorporated into the rest of the property. That's that three plus acre piece that will remain as one piece. Two less lots than were originally anticipated. And the road, no, there's no new improvements. Uh, what is there will continue to be the road under the existing easement that exists today. Sorry for the length, but I thought it would be helpful to everybody to understand. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Um, is there any opposition for this item being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, uh, the Planning Commission has asked um, Mr. Graham to read this into the record. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wall. Uh, this application uh, for Virginia Beach Racquet Club North Associates LP uh, for the rezoning of R20 residential district to R40 residential district, uh, as well as a subdivision variance of uh, the subdivision regulations. The property is located at 1951 Thomas Bishop Lane. Uh, the subject lot is zoned R20 residential and R40 residential district and is currently developed with tennis courts and an asphalt parking lot, uh, which has been owned by the Virginia Beach Racquet Club for decades. Uh, to remove the split zoning on the property, the applicant is requesting to rezone a portion of the property from R20 residential district to R40 residential district. Uh, this will create uh, three lots, uh, all of which are in excess of 40,000 square feet. Uh, the applicant has also received um, approval uh, from the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Area Board uh, to encroach into the RPA uh, and uh, have limited impervious coverage of approximately uh, a maximum of 30 percent. Um, staff, again, supports this uh, project and uh, we recommend approval. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next um, item on the agenda is agenda item number three, Samet Properties LLC is the applicant and Taylor Farms Land Company LLC is the property owner. Um, it's Conditional rezoning um, AG1 and AG2 to I1 Light Industrial at 2097 Harpers Road, Beach District. As a representative, <coughs> speak on the side. Again, thank you, Commissioner Wall, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, Eddie Berdon, Jimmy Attorney, representing Salmon Properties. Uh, pretty simple application. Appreciate being on the consent agenda and appreciate staff's help and Marshall's help on the application. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, is there any opposition to this being placed on the consent agenda? 
Hearing none, uh, the Planning Commission has asked Mr. Alcaraz to read this into the record. Thank you. Again, it is a simple application, but I'll, I'll just be real thorough, real short with the details. Uh, conditional rezoning from AG1 to AG2, uh, Agriculture District to <coughs> Conditional I1 Light Industrial. Staff is recommending approval. Location is 2097 Harpers Road. On September 7, 2021, conditional rezoning for AG1 to AG, and AG2 our Agricultural District <coughs> and I1 Light Industrial District to conditional I1 Light Industrial District. <coughs> Excuse me. As well as a conditional use permit for bulk storage was granted by City Council and uh, to construct a 221,000 uh, square foot distribution center and associated parking. With that application, the applicant proposed two stormwater management facilities and an underground storage below the proposed parking lot to address the stormwater quality and quality control for the site. The applicant is now seeking to increase the stormwater management facilities for the site but by an additional 10 acres to install additional storage in the above ground pond. To accomplish, to accomplish this, the applicant is requesting to rezone an additional 10 acres north of the approved site from AG1 and AG2 to Conditional 1 to, to accommodate for the additional above ground storage for this site. The Planning Commission is recommending this item for consent agenda for approval. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next item on the consent agenda is agenda item number four, um, Monet Freedom Freeman. As um, the applicant shops, shops one LLC is the property owner. It's for a conditional use permit for a tattoo parlor at 4380 Holland Plaza Shopping Center and the Rose Hall <coughs> District. Is there a representative to, uh, to speak on this item? Mr. Wall, um, Monet Freeman is virtual, she's WebEx. So, Monet, if you would wait two to three seconds, we're going to unmute your mic. Please state your name and then state whether or not you agree with the conditions of your application. You're on the consent agenda. Monet Freeman here. And yes, I do agree. Uh, is there any opposition for the side to be placed on the consent agenda? <clears throat> Uh, hearing none, the Planning Commission asked, um, has asked Ms. Ms. Klein to read this into the record. The applicant is requesting a conditional use permit for a tattoo parlor, specifically for the application of permanent makeup known as microblading. The operation will occur within a 472 square foot unit in the Holland Plaza Shopping Center. The property is zoned B2 Community Business. <clears throat> Staff recommends appro approval of this application and it is placed on the consent agenda. Okay, thank you. Um, the next item on the consent agenda is, is agenda item number five, Platinum Management LLC. Um, as the applicant in 5429 Green, Greenwich, Greenwich Road, Virginia LLC is the property owner. Uh, conditional rezoning from I-1 light industrial to conditional A36 <coughs> apartments um, for construction of 315 dwelling units at a density of approximately 29.41 units per acre at 5429 Greenwich Road in the Kempsville District. Is there a representative um, to speak on this item? Welcome. Good afternoon, Chairman, Vice Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. For the record, my name is Lisa Murphy, local zoning attorney, and I'm here on behalf of Platinum Management, LLC. We appreciate um, all of Marshall Coleman's work on this project uh, and being placed on the consent agenda, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, is there any opposition for this item being placed on the consent agenda? Um, hearing none, uh, the commission has asked uh, Mr. Redmond to read this into the record. Thank you, Mr. Wall. This is an application by Platinum Management LLC for, at 5429 Greenwich Road um, for a conditionally rezoning from I-1 Light Industrial Conditional A36 apartment. The applicant is requesting to rezone a 10.73-acre parcel from I-1 Light Industrial District to Conditional A-36 Apartment District to redevelop the property with a 315-unit multifamily residential community. The property is located within the Newtown Strategic Growth Area and is currently developed with the Virginian Pilot Newspaper Production and Distribution Facility. The two existing buildings on the property will be removed in conjunction with the proposed redevelopment of the site. 
The submitted conceptual site plan depicts three multifamily buildings, four stories in height with a clubhouse. The proposed apartments will have an extensive amenity package consisting of courtyards with fire pits, exterior fireplaces and exclusive seating, a resort style pool, grilling stations and fitness facilities within the clubhouse. If you are familiar with this property, and I don't know how you could not be familiar with this property, it is quite iconic. Um, it is in close proximity to the Top Golf Entertainment Facility as well as another apartment um, a building uh, in very close proximity of the same height and similar density. This is a, um, a redeveloping corridor. There's obviously a gigantic transportation project that surrounds it. Um, the uh, staff uh, has laid out a number of conditions that adequately um, serve the public interest. The Planning Commission agrees not just with their judgments, recognizes that there is no public opposition uh, and also believes that this is a very appropriate um, uh, redevelopment project and moves the city and its people forward. And therefore, we concur with the, um, with the staff's recommendation and place it on consent. Mr. Wall. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the next item on the consent agenda is um, agenda item number seven, Hunt Club Condominium <coughs> Association Incorporated is uh, both the applicant and property owner um, for modification of conditions um, at 120 Laughlin Way Drive uh, in the Kempsville District. Is there a representative for this application? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, members of the Commission. Again, for the record, Eddie Berdon, Virginia Beach Attorney, representing the Hunt Club Condominium Association, Inc., which are the owners of the existing uh, 37 units on this 11-acre piece of property. Uh, <coughs> uh, Elizabeth did a fantastic job. Um, I will correct her on one thing. This was, uh, it was a PDH2 rezoning. It was not a conditional rezoning in 1982, and, and actually, I'd just graduated from law school, hadn't passed the bar exam, so that tells you how long ago this was. Um, <laughs> a whole very long time, and it was even before Don was on the planning commission, too. <laughs> the, um, this is a great application, and it's a, it is, as Elizabeth said, a unique application. The association is doing this. This, this does not represent any additional impervious surface as the building pads and the, the buildings were approved originally with the site plan after the, the PDH2 rezoning. Um, it's just, it's a, it, and it's, it helps the association, which has all this land it's been maintaining in these buildings uh, for the last 38 years. And it's hard for, you know, that few number of people to have to pay for all this maintenance. And all these new, the new buildings all get upgraded um, out of this as well. So it's, a, it's an excellent situation. And it'll probably not anything like it will probably never exist again. But appreciate being on the consent agenda. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any opposition for this application to be placed on the consent agenda? Um, hearing none, uh, the commission has asked uh, Mr. Bradley to read this into the record. Okay. The applicant and property owner, Hunt Club Condominium, is requesting a modification of conditions to increase the number of multifamily dwellings permitted on site by 11 at a resulting density of 4.25 units per acre. Uh, the 11.3 acre site is a multifamily residential development originally approved by City Council on September 27, 1982. When the conditional rezoning for this property was improved in 1982, there was a general practice of imposing conditions in lieu of a voluntary proffer agreement. As this practice is no longer preferred, the applicant is offering proffers in order to modify those conditions of approval, hence the request for the proffered modification of conditions. Condition 5 of the 1982 approval states, the applicant has voluntary, voluntarily agreed to limit the number of units to a total of 37. A modification of this condition is required to revise this limit. As part of their application, the applicant is also proffering a site plan, architectural design, and landscaping of the site. Okay, thank you. Mr. Wall, if I may, uh, I, although I'm not required to disclose, I am disclosing for this that uh, I am a member, I am a member of the board of directors and vice chairman of the adjacent property owner, Kimsville Christian Church. I, because of that, I have not uh, reviewed nor uh, influenced staff on the <coughs> review of this application. <clears throat> okay, thank you. The next, um, next item on the uh, consent agenda is agenda item number eight, um, 
Triana Mills. Um, it's the applicant in Providence Square Office Park Associates as the, the property owner. Um, condition, for a conditional use permit for a tattoo parlor uh, at 1017 uh, Kempsville Road uh, in the Kempsville District. Is there a representative for this application? Okay. Um, no. Okay. No. Okay. All right. Seeing that there's none, um, we are just we're going to move. Um, is there any opposition for this item to be placed on the consent agenda? Um, hearing none, uh, the Planning Commission has asked uh, Mr. Inman to read this into the record. Uh, number nine. Oh. <laughs> yeah, number nine. That's it. Oh, we're on, a, is we're on number, number nine. Eight. Number eight. We're on number eight. eight. Sorry, number eight. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah get you down for number eight, too. Um, what are we saying here? I got you down for number eight. Mm -hmm. Six, seven, eight. You sure you're not doing eight, Mike? I got you down for number eight. I don't have. I don't look at me, Mike. You had me down for number. Yeah, we all have you down for number eight. <laughs> Give me two seconds and I'll do it. Yeah. 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 yeah I prepared for number nine. Who's doing number nine? Um, Mr. Costa is doing number nine. No. You got your glass. Don't y'all fight, there, man. I couldn't get it by the speak up earlier. Tight. Just be cool. Be cool. I can do it. Dave would. You want us to do it, Dave? Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah, I'll Come on. It's, um, number number eight is uh, application for the tattoo parlor. Uh, it's located at 1017 Kempsville Road. The uh, request is for um, the applicant to obtain a um, must obtain a business license and a, from the health department. Uh, the uh, applicant is not proposing any new signage for the establishment. Uh, about four employees are anticipated and typical hours of operation will be 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. There are a number of uh, conditions that have been approved and it's accepted by the applicant. And the comprehensive plan recognizes this property as being within the suburban area and that its guiding principles have been established by the comprehensive plan and that this use will meet that, those criteria. And for that reason, uh, staff recommended it and we agreed to put it on the consent agenda. Thank you. Great job. Appreciate it. <laughs> Wing it. <laughs> the, uh, the next item on the consent agenda is um, Kevin and Keisha uh, Mercer as the applicant and RT Virginia Holdings LLC is the, uh, the <coughs> property owner for a conditional use permit for simple use at 5300 Kemp's River Drive um, in the Kempsville District. Um, is there a representative to speak on this uh, application? Welcome. Welcome. Please Thank speak. you. Good afternoon. My name is Keisha Mercer. I represent um, venue 1225. I am um, seeking a space for individuals to have celebratory events. And I thank you all for your time and consideration. Okay, thanks. Are the um, are the condition the six conditions acceptable? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Um, is there um, any opposition for this application be placed on the consent agenda? Jack, just let me go out of the box here for a minute. Just today's Mr. Inman's last meeting, and he's ready to read number nine. I think we should let him read number nine. Oh, that's Go a great ahead. idea. That's a great idea. Yep. Go ahead. Mr. Costin would be very disappointed. He's, he's just I, mean, I, I think he'll be. I don't think he doesn't look disappointed. <laughs> you don't mind if I do? I don't mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, that was very gracious of you. But can I just ask, did we ever resolve who is doing eight? I mean, is this just a mystery? Are going to leave it? Uh, that's okay. Yeah. Anyway. Let's, let's not go into that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so number nine is a conditional use permit application uh, at the Kemp's Corner Shops, uh, which is in a B2 community business district. The applicant uh, estimates the number of guests, at, and, and it's, it's a, for an assembly hall um, and a banquet hall, and as the applicant stated, it, uh, for celebratory events. And uh, applicant estimates the number of guests will range from 10 to 105. The uh, parking requirements are met on site. There are no significant modifications to the site anticipated or the building. Um, the conditions include um, 
uh, on-site signage must meet the zoning code. All activities must occur within the building. Outdoor events are prohibited unless permitted by a special event permit. And no amplification of music or speakers or monitors will be permitted except within the enclosed building. And ha having met those conditions, the and staff recommends and we put it on the consent agenda. Okay, thank you very much. My uh, pleasure. The, the <laughs> next next item is, is agenda item number 10, Jody um, Calcagno as the applicant and HCD Properties LLC as the, the property owner um, for a condition use permit for simple use at 4752 Euclid Road in the, uh, the Bayside District. Is there a representative for this application? Thank you, Chairman, Vice Chairman, and members of the Planning Commission. My name is Jody Michelle Calcagno, and I'm representing 4752 Euclid Road. Um, thank you, Michaela, for your uh, guidance during this process. Um, and thank you for including me on the consent agenda today. I um, accept all terms. OK, so the seven conditions are acceptable. They are, okay. yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, is there any opposition for this item to be placed on the consent agenda? <coughs> Hearing none, um, the Planning Commission has asked Mr. Redmond to read this into the record. Thank you, Mr. Wall. This is an application by Jody Calcogno, who we just saw, um, for a conditional use permit for an assembly use. The applicant is proposing to convert a portion of the first floor of an existing 12,600 square foot office building into a boutique event venue. Events such as these are classified in the zoning ordinance as assembly uses, thereby necessitating a conditional use permit in the B2 Community Business District. The 3,400 square foot event space will consist of three party rooms and an outdoor patio. The applicant plans to host bridal and wedding showers as well as business retreats. The second floor of the existing building will remain office space with 11 units. You can see a picture of the building here. It's appropriate for this kind of use. Um, I'm well familiar with this building. I work right around the corner. The, uh, there was some concern about the, uh, about the <clears throat> amount of parking and parking availability for the office uses and for this event venue. The applicant uh, <coughs> has proposed to, um, to manage her events in such a way so as not in hours so as not to <coughs> conflict with the business use in this building. So they are utilizing a shared parking arrangement in a way which is in, a, in and of itself a positive thing more parking, less asphalt, everybody's uh, needs and uses get met. It's an appropriate use in this location. The staff uh, supports it. We're unaware of any opposition. And the, uh, and the uh, commission agrees then with the staff by consent. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Wall. All right, thank you. Uh, the next application is agenda item number 11, uh, Michael D. Sipen. I'm incorporated as the applicant and Virginia Beach Investment Company as the property owner. Um, for conditional use permit for self-storage um, mini warehouse. Is there a representative for this? Um, actually, it's in the Centerville, excuse me, it's in the Centerville District um, at the corner southwest intersection of Providence Road and uh, College Park Boulevard. Is there a representative for this application? Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Again, Eddie Berdon, Jimmy <laughs> attorney for the record, representing Michael D. Siphon Incorporated. I want to thank Michaela for her extremely good work on this and I, I want to compliment Mr. Tahan for the new hires that, uh, that, that, the, the, that the department has. Um, they're they're going to be excellent additions and are excellent additions. Uh, all nine conditions as recommended uh, in the use permit are acceptable. I want to add one thing. The building is actually designed, it is a 45 foot tall building roof. The only reason it's above are the parapets, which add to the architectural interest of the building, and also um, they shield uh, mechanical equipment that's on top from view. So it's the building was at 45 feet, but it, it's just for the parapet. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Is there any, any opposition for this application to be placed on the consent agenda? I'm hearing none. We've asked um, Ms. Klein to read this into the record. The applicant is requesting a conditional use permit for a mini warehouse on a 2.89 acre undeveloped parcel zoned B2 community dis business district at the southwest corner of Providence Road and College Park Boulevard. 
The four-story mini warehouse building will be climate controlled with a floor area of 165,680 square feet. Mm -hmm. Staff approve, supports the application and uh, the commission places it on the <coughs> consent agenda. Okay, thank you. Um, additionally, we have um, the short-term rentals, which are, are now in the, the regular consent agenda. And um, the next um, application is, is 12 through 17. Um, agenda items 12 through 17, uh, 25 by 8, uh, Pacific Avenue LLC is both the applicant and property owner um, for conditional use permits for short-term rentals at uh, 2510, 2514, 2518, 2522, 2526, 2530 Pacific Avenue in the Beach District. Is there a representative for this application? Uh, I feel like a bad penny. I keep turning up. Um, <laughs> Eddie Berdon, Jimmy Attorney, representing 2508 Pacific Avenue LLC. Uh, thanks to Antoinette and Ms. Moss and her staff, all 21 conditions as recommended uh, are acceptable. I did want to, again, put on the records, this is new. Um, the What council approved when they finally got, and, and you all after all the years, these units, all but one that doesn't have a garage, the ones with a garage are all two-car garages. And to meet the parking requirements, they're two-car garages for use as just a residence. Uh, but the um, short-term rental ordinance now says you only get to get one parking space credit in the garage. So this is, this sort of one is just really overparked by having the extra 10 spaces. But then it's not a complaint. Just want to put that on the record because not everybody's completely aware of that, that change. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there any opposition for this being placed on the consent agenda? Um, the hearing side. none. Side. Okay. Um, is uh, number 18, ORP Ventures, LLC, as both the applicant and property owner uh, for short-term rental uh, conditional use permit at 603 20th Street in the Beach District. As a representative for this application. Again, Eddie Berdon, Beach Attorney, representing the applicant. Um, again, appreciate Antoinette's work. All 19 conditions as recommended are acceptable to the applicant. Okay, thank you. Um, the next item is agenda item number 19 through 27, ORP Ventures, LLC, again, is applicant and property owner, uh, condition use permit for short-term rentals at uh, 410 19th Street, um, unit 101, 102, 103, 201, 202, and 412, and, um, 19th Street, unit 101, 102, 201, 202, in the Beach District. Um, is there a representative for this application? Again, Eddie Berdon, Virginia Attorney, representing the applicant. Before I tell you that all 19 conditions, or excuse me, all uh, 18 conditions are acceptable, I want to thank Mr. Inman for his service to our city. Um, this, and I, all of you, for that matter, as volunteers, as much, as much time and effort as you put into it, but Mr. Inman has brought a, a great deal of uh, knowledge of real estate law to the to the table, which I think has helped everyone over the course of his tenure on this commission, and he'll be sorely missed, won't, won't be able to be replaced, but there'll be someone that'll do a good job just the same. And I want to thank everybody, or excuse me, wish everybody happy holidays. So Merry Christmas, thank Happy you. New Year, hope everybody has a great, safe um, holiday, and uh, appreciate Brandon's work and the conditions are acceptable to my clients. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there, um, is there any opposition for agenda items um, 18 through 27 being placed on the consent agenda? All right, um, hearing none, uh, Mr. Oh. Chairman. Wait, then, then, I'll get to you. Okay. Wait one okay. second. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Good. You're um, up. Mr. Chairman, hearing none, um, I make a motion that we approve uh, agenda items uh, one and two, um, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12 through 17, 18, and 19 through 27. All right, we have a motion for approval. Do we have a second? Second. Have a second? No, no, no. Okay, no. Um, now. Disclosure. Yeah, no, I know, we're going there. We've got the motion, we got a second, now we have disclosures. <coughs> okay, um, go ahead, you start. Uh, Whitney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, pursuant to the Conflicts of Interest Act, uh, Virginia Code Section 2.2-3115F, I make, and I have a letter on file uh, to this as well, I make the uh, uh, following uh, declarations. Um, 
the following uh, agenda items on today's agenda uh, have uh, some financing by Town Bank, which I serve on uh, one of the boards at Town Bank. Uh, but I don't make any uh, any uh, uh, decisions based on lo uh, for loans or anything like that. Um, so anyway, uh, these are items uh, one and two: Virginia Beach Racquet Club North Associates LP, 1951. Thomas Bishop Lane, number 10, Jody Cal Cogno, uh, 4752 Lucid Road. Um, agenda items 12 through 17, uh, 2508 Pacific Avenue, LLC, uh, for 2510, 2514, 2518, 2522, 2526, 2530 Pacific Avenue. Uh, agenda item number 18, ORF Ventures, LLC, 603 20th Street. Uh, agenda items 19 through 27, ORF Ventures, LLC, 410 19th Street, Units 101, 102, 103, 201, 202, uh, four, and uh, this is uh, at 412 19th Street, uh, Units 101, 102, 201, and 202. Sorry about the length of that. Thank you. All right, next, Mr. Redmond. Yeah, I'm not gonna do any of that. I will say that I um, have a letter myself on file with the city attorney's office, um, which uh, prevents me from voting on all of the short-term rental. Uh, I have a client in the travel industry, and I therefore um, do not vote on any of the individual short-term rental applications, nor on any of the ordinances that govern short-term rentals. So I will not, so while I will be voting in favor of the consent agenda, I'm ex specifically abstaining from those items, which um, I have down as numbers 12 to 27 uh, on short-term rentals. Thank you, Kay, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman? Yes. yes um, I have, uh, to make a disclosure regarding uh, items financing by Town Bank, uh, I serve on an advisory board, as uh, does Mr. Graham. That does not make any uh, loan decisions, but <clears throat> disclosing with regard to uh, agenda items 1 and 2, 10, 18, and 19 through 27, without going into the same detail that uh, Mr. Graham did. Uh, I believe I can participate in these uh, decisions fairly and objectively, and I will participate in voting on those items. Uh, next, <clears throat> I am um, making a disclosure. Um, with regard to item number three, Samet Properties, one of my uh, partners uh, represents the applicant, uh, Taylor Farms Land Company. And I'm not involved in that representation, nor do I represent the owner. Um, and I have no financial interest on in having made this disclosure. I believe I can participate in this uh, a vote uh, objectively, fairly, and in the public interest. Last but not least, with regard to item seven, Hunt Club condominium, I represent that applicant, and, uh, and otherwise not here today, obviously Mr. Verdon did. Uh, and um, I will therefore abstain from item number seven. Okay. Mr. Graham, do you want to add something? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I uh, apologize. Um, in my disclosure, I, I want to uh, add that I do plan to participate uh, in today's vote and that I feel that I can do so fairly um, and objectively okay. in the public's interest. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we have a, a motion for approval by Mr. Wall and a second by Mr. Horsley. Okay, vote is open. <clears throat> By recorded vote of 10 in favor, zero against, agenda items one and two, three, four, five, eight, nine, 10, and 11 have been recommended for approval by consent. Agenda item number seven, by recorded vote of nine in favor, zero against, with one abstention, has been recommended for approval by consent. And agenda items 12 through 17, 18, 19 through 27, through recorded vote of nine in favor, zero against, with one abstention, have been recommended for approval by consent. Great, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for those who had items on the consent agenda. You're, they will be scheduled with City Council in the upcoming days, and they'll be, you'll be notified. All right, thank you.
Okay, next we are going to item number six. And before we do that, I need to read something. Um, let's see, pursuant to the state and local government conflict of interest act, I make the following de declaration. I'm executing this written disclosure regarding the planning commission discussion on boat number six, Princess Anne Village at um, 2385 Princess Anne Road. Uh, parcels 2398 North Landing Road and 2385 Princess Anne Road. The applicant is a client of mine and as a employee of Batchelder and Collins, 2305 Granby Street, I have financial personal interest in this transaction. Therefore, I abstain for discussion on this matter in December 8, 2021 Planning Commission hearing. I am going to step out and Mr. Wall will take over. <clears throat> you. Okay, thank you. Um, the uh, the one and only item to be heard today is agenda item number six, uh, Prince Anne Village LLC. Um, as the applicant and, and uh, Susan Kellum, David Kellum, um, Rockville Trust Kellum and Eaton Incorporated Sisters Two LLC and Charles E. Burroughs the Third and City of Virginia Beach as the property owners for conditional rezoning um, for B2 uh, community business. Um, AG1, AG2 to PDH2, uh, planned unit development um, in the R10 residential district and conditional B2 community business districts um, at 2369, 2373, 2375, 2381, 2385 Prince Anne Road and 2393, 2401, 2413 North Landing Road. Um, uh, parcel between 2393 North Landing Road and 2385 Princess Sand Road in the uh, Princess Sand District is a representative for this application. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Wall. Thank you, Mr. Acting Chairman, soon to be chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, for members of the commission, my name is R.J. Nutter. I'm an attorney. I represent the applicants. I'm pleased to be here today. I want to thank uh, Bobby and his staff, Wa, Carolyn, uh, for moving this application forward. It's It's been with the city uh, for some time working through the issues and uh, we're happy to be here today. We appreciate their indulgence. Um, I'd also like to say that, that the families involved in this case have owned this property for generations. They have literally watched the courthouse grow. They have watched all the neighborhoods around the courthouse grow, be rezoned and developed. Um, and they have been some of the stalwarts of this community since its formation, as you know, with the Cullum family. Um, so when it was time to start developing or looking for their next generation of what's going to happen to the properties, they really wanted to do work with some people who were going to make a difference and not just propose another development that would be just one more in the line of development around the courthouse. Instead, they wanted to be an anchor to the municipal center. And so for that, they hired some of the top planning firms in the country. Um, and after working with those firms, uh, we then select, they then selected, I should say, um, a consultant uh, for our properties who is a consultant in this case but has designed the properties, designed the homes, um, and will be overseeing the construction of these homes to make sure they qualify up to the standards of Mr. Fry and his company. Uh, you may know that Mr. Fry and his companies have been recognized around the country as some of the best neo-traditional in in neighborhoods in, in Virginia. Um, and is often cited for how to develop property in and around areas where you have uh, a lot of trees and want to save those trees and, and areas where you want to have uh, really something special. Uh, his property is of East Beach in Norfolk and the Cavalier in Virginia Beach. This will only be his second Virginia Beach entree um, and it'll be of the same quality levels that you see in both of those developments. Um, but at any rate, uh, a little bit about the parties and why this is important. And but it, that'll kind of frame it for you because as you can see, and I want some people to understand this because there was some sort of chatter on next door neighbor the other day about this. I want to let you know that uh, for those of you watching or listening, um, that this is one of the lowest density projects in and around the entire area. That most of the other areas around and neighborhoods around this are have a much higher density. Those include Courthouse Green, the Enclave, Courthouse North, Courthouse Forest, High Court and Holland Crossing, all of which have higher densities than this project. None of those properties involved open space like this has, none of them involved conservation areas like this project has, and none of them involved 
the well, several high quality and nice neighborhoods, uh, none of them are the neo traditional development that you, we see being brought forward here. What's so special about neo traditional? Um, it, it number one, it has a much higher degree of preservation of the land, it has less land utilization for roads, it has less land utilization for parking. It uh, provides that the homes in this case will all front on a, on a park like setting. Every single home in this development will front on a park-like setting. Um, the access to those homes where the cars will be parked is in the rear. You will not see them. Um, and this allows for, again, uh, greater urbanization between people. They get to walk around. This is a very walkable neighborhood. You're not going to see people trying to get to their homes by stepping over somebody's car in the parking lot and so forth. You will walk up to their front porch just like you do years and years ago in New England neighborhoods where this was forced, forced brought, to, brought to the forefront. Uh, in terms of density, again, as I told you, we're amongst the lowest. Uh, one thing, if I could, I did want to show about the density. Well, the number is 89 in terms of uh, actual units or, or in terms of the zoning ordinance. There are really 73 single-family development homes, 73. <coughs> the reason it's 89 is because, and this would be important, Robin, for your perspective, there are six, up to 16 available apartments here, garage apartments. They cannot exceed 800 square feet. They cannot, they ha cannot have their own utility service. They have to be connected through the home. It has to be contained fully within the home. This was the same product we introduced to the Cavalier and at East Beach. The benefit of this is it allows people in different uh, demographic areas and with different socioeconomic backgrounds to live in a nice neighborhood without buying an expensive home. It was very important for people who live that close to the courthouse to be able to have those type of units so they can live and walk to the courthouse. It's important for people who buy these homes to have residents of members of their family who are getting older and don't want to live independently but want to live want to live independently but want to live somewhere close to their families. This was intentionally put in to this ordinance in this case. Um, in other cases, it doesn't even have to count toward density, but we said, all right, we'll be happy to count it toward density, since even with those units, we're still under the densities of those around us. So I wanted to know about that. In terms of a comp plan, as you know, the neighborhood has been involved here, all the neighborhoods here have been involved in the direction of many comp plans. This comp plan involves actually four different planning districts. It involves the transition zone, the inner facility zone, the municipal center district, and the courthouse historic and cultural districts. All of those overlay a portion of this property. So when we were looking at how to develop this property, we had to comply with all four of those criteria. And I'm happy to tell you, as staff points out, we've done that. All four and a comp plan, therefore, recommends approval. Um, so uh, also, I want to point out that we went to the historic review board twice. Uh, first, to go, some of the homes were in bad shape, had to be demolished. Um, and that had to be approved. And in other cases, they approved the architecture of the homes. And we submitted actually three different types, of, and uh, we decided to withdraw the Victorian. I apologize, couldn't confirm this while until this morning. But uh, so we're not putting Victorian style homes in here, we're putting the other three that have been approved by the board. Um, so, in addition to that, I want you to know we did an elaborate stormwater process study here. Um, that process took close to two years over $250,000 in modeling fees with Kimley Horn and, and, um, and Mr. Kellum's firm. Um, so it's, um, and I'm happy to tell you that uh, we're not only taking care of the water from this property and on this property, we're picking up water off the adjacent roadways. And, and, and we're also permitting the city to pass water through here that covers about 160 acres of property on the other side of Prince Anne Road, all flow through a ditch system that will come into this property. So uh, that's very important, as you can imagine. So we're not only handling our water, we're handling public water off the street, and we're permitting the city's water to run through this property, uh, again, about 160 acres. So when we were doing the modeling, all of that water had to be included, even though it's not our water. It's still water. So we had to make sure the models tested for that, and as staff points out, they're happy that we've been able to accomplish that task. Um, one of the questions, Ms. Klein, you asked about floodplain and flood areas. The city does the maps you saw based on largely aerial photos. An applicant is able to approach the agencies and submit studies where the exact soils are on their property and so forth, 
and to what's known as a LOMA study. They did that in this case, and I'm happy to tell you, based on that study, which was approved by the state, all of the homes and, and properties are really outside of those areas now. Okay, So I wanted you to know that's the case. Um, because in addition to the large conservation areas we're dedicating here, um, we stayed out of those areas and trying, we tried our best to stay out of those areas, as you might imagine. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want to be there any more than you want us to be there. So um, with that, I'll try to, try to answer any questions with you. I would, would tell you that we've, we've tried to address every question that the staff's come up with. We're pleased the stormwater's come out the way it has, um, and we're anxious to get going with this project, I might tell you. So I'm um, happy to answer any questions you might have, Mr. Horsley, Mr. Bradley. And, okay. Uh, well, thank yes. you, Mr. Nutter. Are there any questions? I do have one question. Yes, certainly. If I understand you correctly about the garage apartment, yes. if I purchase a home mm -hmm. in, print, in this neighborhood, right. I can then rent out yes, the garage apartment Correct. to someone in, in the community. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And Pacific, in fact, they found that not only helped in different socioeconomic situation in the neighborhood, it made it more lively, quite frankly. They found different people, different backgrounds, were part of that neighborhood, not just people who could afford a particular home. Okay? Thank you. Good. Yeah. Along that same line, but that's only on those, was it 13 homes? Uh, 16, 16 homes. 16 homes. And they have to be the largest lot. Yeah. Yes, sir. So it's just yes. on those. That's so, so the so the other, other homes can't add these type of things to them. No. That's correct. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. All anyway. right. Anybody else? I've no? got a question. Oh, Mr. Mr. Wall, um, absolutely. The, uh, you know, it looks like you're preserving um, existing mature landscaping. Can you, can you? Sure. We, you, we, um, we did go in. That? Sure, I'm happy to. First of all, I didn't point this out as much as I should have. But uh, in addition to the conservation areas, uh, the area you see that's kind of outlined with the streets there, uh, comprises about 21.496 acres. Um, within that acreage, we have about 6. Uh, 6.12, hold on here, 6.27 acres of open space. And it was done intentionally, not only for the park perception, but also we wanted to preserve as many trees on the site as we could. And in fact, we did some tree surveys, and we found some actually some trees that really make some sense in trying to save. And there's one thing you know about Mr. Fry's developments is they, they go around trees. They try not to disrupt. If you've been driving around Cavalier, for instance, you'll see that the trees are, are given the right-of-way almost <laughs> over the right-of-ways. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of his styles of his mm -hmm. development. But um, there's tree preservation going on in those areas. There will be some tree loss. I can't mislead you because it's a heavily wooded site. Um, but on the other hand, we're preserving far more areas, almost three to one areas, where we're disturbing. This because we have 70 some acres, about 70 acres of conservation area. We have, of the 21 acres, we have 6.27 inside of that that are preserved as well. So. Yes. Okay. Um, also, the buffer on Princess Anne Road. Sure. Um, it looks like there's a, you know, preserving <coughs> um, we are, you know, some of the material landscaping plus, you know, like a setback from It that. really is. I, that's, I, I'm glad you pointed that out because one of the things we, it was in the design process, which, is, which was, uh, exhaustive because uh, it kept getting better. And that was one of the things we added with just from the last year uh, was this elongated feature that's about 50 foot wide runs the entire length of it. And we did it because we didn't want people's lot lines, or we, excuse me, we didn't want there to be any development along in that area. We want those homes to face out onto that feature. And when you're driving down Prince Sand Road, we wanted you to see just the front of the houses behind those trees and behind that green space area. And if you notice, the other important feature is if you, the only entrance and en entrance of the property is right by the courthouse, Prince Anne Road. And if you look, when you come in there, you're going to see a park there. You're going to see a park. So you won't see the houses until they're almost way down here at the end. It's really by design. It was intended to be when you come into this, you're going to see this really cool green area with houses back on the sides. So all that was by design. So, and we appreciate also the planning department and not just public works as well and, and public utilities because they've had to, you know, when you do something different, you are got to run into a lot of rules that are based upon things that we, like we used to do 30, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. So there's no surprise there's some variances involved in this to make it work. But because we've made it work at East Beach and Cavalier, we're, we're know it can work here as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And if I could, uh, I'd like to also thank Mr. Inman, and I'm sorry Dee's not here for your service. 
along with everyone else, from just like Eddie said. But uh, you sorely missed. It would be nice to have, uh, see you without having to worry about me running into you, Jim, asking about something about on Planning Commission agenda. But at the same time, I really appreciate all the service you've done, Mike. I'm sorry Dee's not here to personally thank her as well. And uh, David, uh, congratulations. He must have got another year, so that's good news. So. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sorry. Any other questions? Um, anybody else? I got one quick Oh, yes, question. Mr. Costin. Uh, we discussed the uh, the addition, the driving space for, for the emergency apparatus. Oh, yes, Can sir. Can you kind of point those out? Yeah, I didn't do that. Thank you very much. Uh, one of the things we did early on in this process was to uh, meet with the fire department uh, because whenever you have alleyways and smaller streets and things of that nature, you got to make sure emergency vehicles can access the property. I hope this works. Is this the one? Uh, let's see. Let's try this one. Is that one? Yeah, turn it on. <laughs> uh, no. No, no, no. It's like use the bigger one, RJ. Years. Just make yeah, sure it's on. This one? Oh, it's on? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes. Good point. It's on. Okay. Ah, oh, there we go. Um, in addition to... Um, what we did, we designed these roads so they obviously could accommodate emergency vehicles. But of course, fire department said we need more than just that access way. So along these portions here, let me show you here and here and here and here. In addition to these alleyways, they have uh, some subterranean features built in <coughs> uh, so that the trucks, fire trucks can maneuver in that and stay there. You, they'll look green, but between the area of the, the, the alleyways and those walkways, uh, excuse me, those sub, subterranean features, the fire trucks will be able to get maneuver in there. We, we've used this at multiple locations. Uh, Westminster Canterbury has it around their properties where it looks green and their trucks can get around the buildings. But um, I'm glad you asked that, Mr. Costa. In fact, we, he's put a lot of time and effort into this application and uh, wanted to make sure that was covered. So um, I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Costa. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. My pleasure. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Nutter. Yes, sir. Um, can you call the first speaker? We have no speakers. We have no speakers. Okay. Um, in that case, um, then I'm going to open it up for discuss discussion. Mr. Bradley. Well, I live about a mile or two from here, and I'm biased, but I think this is one of the prettiest areas in the city as you drive. Uh, down Princess Anne Road as you're approaching the Municipal Center. <coughs> and I think this development is really going to add to this area of the city. Um, one of the things that I'm on as being a planning commissioner is the tra transition area subcommittee. Uh, I was not on the subcommittee um, when this was reviewed, but it was recommended by that committee <coughs> as, as something to move forward. I think with Nemo Parkway being built uh, several years ago, that's going to take the traffic uh, pressure off this area. There was a lot of traffic. I think we've all seen that, you know, before as you would approach the muni municipal center on a work day. I think the development is, is beautiful, will be unique, and uh, I think it's going to add to the municipal center area, um, which I think, you know, will be complimentary. There's, I think, over 50% of the property is going to be open space. It's already been pointed out, some of the neat conservation areas in there. Uh, they're going to help with the city trail that's going to be coming from Foxfire and also a, a trailhead uh, near um, the parking lot over here. So to me, I, I see a lot of positives with this, and, and I'm going to be voting yes on it. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I just want to add a little bit. I agree with Mr. Bradley. I think it's very well thought out. Um, I mean, it's a shame we don't have more projects like this in the city. I think it's just really well done and I and I um I think that the the developer and their consultants uh did a good job of 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 uh coming up with a design that that I I think really kind of like you said earlier checks a lot of boxes so that that's all I have I'll be supporting it okay Mr. Horsley I just want to say that this project has been a long time coming I think I, I don't know I said this after this morning maybe 15 years or maybe 20 years ago since they started trying to do something with these properties down here and a lot of different ideas came up and I think different ones but the but the uh, the willingness of the people to be patient and, and get this thing right the landowners and and join the all these properties together I think it's something like 10 different parcels that have been been put together and that that's that's a hard thing to do in itself 
and to get it to get it done and then to come with a, a quality project like this I think is uh, right here um, in, in at the courthouse this is the uh, the cornerstone of, of the city as far as I'm concerned so so I'm I'm real proud of this project and and I will be supporting it also my turn okay yep. <laughs> um, I think the project is gorgeous um, the renderings are beautiful um, I would love to live in one of those houses um, one day and if this was just regular bare green space I don't think I would have a problem with it um, but you know we just voted to spend half a billion dollars on flood mitigation and those are all mature trees and a hundred house 75 homes you know that are in the upper income bracket um who could you know you can put your mother-in-law in there you can rent to a college student you know i can't say what's going to go in there um, but that's not enough for me to lose the environmental benefits of the mature trees and so i will be voting against it Okay, thank you. Mr. Redmond. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of agenda item number six. Okay, before you, before you is there anybody else who, to speak on, who wants to say anything? I've got one thing though, before we'll, we'll get to that. I just, uh, a couple things. Um, you know, in my opinion, I think they did a great job with the application. Uh, maintaining open space and mature landscaping, you know, the green space, um, I think the architectural features um, blend with the courthouse district, um, unique site layout um, that preserves the open space and limits um, you know, the, the impervious footprint. Um, I think, you know, I trust the stormwater review uh, that's, that's been done um, has been appropriate, and uh, I trust that it's, uh, the additional review that's going to be done through site development process will be um, just as thorough. Um, the transportation, uh, there was some um, opposition in terms of written opposition. You, mostly based on transportation. Um, you know, certainly, you know, it's gonna add trips. You had homes, it's gonna add trips, but I, I, I think it's gonna be a minimal impact to, um, to traffic at that um, corridor. So I'll, I'll be supporting Mr. Edmund. Well, let me, let me just add it. This is a, obviously a challenging piece of property, but it is a piece of property that, that our fellow citizens own. And if they're able to develop it in a responsible way, they deserve the opportunity to develop it. No one could possibly have gone much mm. further in planning, uh, in the sensitivity of their planning, uh, and is, has been incredible, obviously. And it's taken quite a while to do it. And in this day and time, all of us, I think, are well aware that stormwater management is, um, is has very high degree of requirements now uh, far more than than ever before some more than some of our civil engineers think is even reasonable um, so uh, they have to meet all those criteria at this point in time and apparently and they uh, they can't so uh, I'm, I think it's a great project to support okay mr. Redmond actually I would yield to mr. Brad okay. Okay, I, I would move that we approve agenda item six, the conditional rezoning of this. Okay. Set. Okay. All right. Um, well, that was a motion by Mr. Bradley and a second by Mr. Redmond. Yes. Okay, thank you. Vote is open. Okay. A recorded vote of eight in favor, one against. Agenda item number six has been recommended for approval. Thank you. And note the one abstention as well. No, he's absent. He's counted as absent. He didn't. For, for the record, we'll note that Mr. Weiner left the meeting at the time, so there was no abstention. He was no longer sitting at the board. Yeah. Usually at this time we wrap things up, but <clears throat> today is Mr. Emmons' last day, and I'm sure he would like to maybe say a few words if he'd like to. Well, that's a surprise. not that I'm putting you on the spot or anything, but <laughs> no, no, no. And, uh, oh, that's a surprise. I uh, appreciated the opportunity to uh, serve on the on the commission and, and having had that invitation eight years ago, uh, and uh, uh, having a history of in my career uh, as an attorney, I did I used to do planning work uh, as Mr. Nutter and Mr. Bourdon 
do. Obviously, it's a long time ago. None of you remember that. <laughs> uh, even Mr. Horsley, he, you know, he might remember me from one time <laughs> or another. But um, don't put age. So, in so I, 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 when I had the opportunity to, to serve on this uh, body, I, I felt like I could uh, bring some experience and to bear, and uh, was happy. To, and I, I believe in in community service and in different ways in, in my life. So this is uh, a good opportunity for me to do that. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Well, I had a big long speech plan, but um, you guys are stuck with me next year, so you got to wait till next year. <laughs> um, in saying that, or yes, go ahead. I'd like to make a comment that you know I'm, I've enjoyed serving with with Mike on the on the commission from, from for the eight, eight years that we've served together. I think we've served together most of them. It may have been a one 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 year break there for right. me, but but. Uh, you know, that's that's one of the things that I've taken pride in by serving on the commission, you know, all these years that meet new people and make new friends and make new associations. And Mike's been one of them that, that I've enjoyed, enjoyed having. And nice, nice having you and nice, nice to have met with you. Feelings mutual. All right. Any other business? New business? <laughs> yes, we have other business. Mr. Chairman, thank you for your service. Staff is giving you a Hopefully you will not use too much as a paperweight hidden off in a corner somewhere. But <laughs> that you will it's very heavy. Find. It's an anvil. Thank you. Oh, so, like me. And you were supposed to come off, so you're still getting it anyway just a year early. Oh, a year early. So it's going to get anything next year. <laughs> you won't get it. I don't That's get right. it the next, next year? Next okay. <laughs> I guess i got to keep my name plaque here, too. Dee wanted me to bring her name plaque to her, so maybe I can get it tomorrow night. Let's see what this is. You know what it is? No? Got a little weight. It's really oh. heavy. Oh, yeah, it's very nice. Snow globe. Snow globe. It's a snow globe. It is a snow globe. No, not wow. Oh, very nice. Oh, very nice. nice. The wave. It's got, it's got the wave. I like it. It's cool. Very What's nice. the sound? We do appreciate it. Thank you very much. But I'll, I'm saving my speech for next year. <laughs> Any other business? New business? Still business? All right. We are adjourned. That's a wrap. Okay. Thank you.